that's the tip of like what is classified as hot and nothing else is hot. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't be like Carolina Reaper is the hottest thing on the planet is like where things are hot. No, no, no. That's where things are stupid. <laughs> things get hot before that, though. You're crazy, bro. You're crazy. Well, man, we're not going to see. Wait, we saw. No, we saw Genji in one game when it got redrafted and then the game didn't happen because it got forfeited. So we have not got to see a Genji game today. He's super he, good, man. He's so strong. He just permabanned. Yeah. Man. I mean, if you if HGC's midseason brawl was a uh, negate or anything, man. Genji's just if got there's crazy. a kill to be secure, yeah, Genji's gonna get. He's it. gonna get it, and Dragon Blade is just—it's so good. It needs to be nerfed, in my opinion. <laughs> hey, Oz. <laughs> Yeah, man, I don't trust me either because of that. No, that makes no goddamn sense. What? <laughs> if you do saw Jake GG backwards, that's Gekrek Dallas. The Lawless. <laughs> like, that makes less sense. At least Ayawas <laughs> could be an actual name. You don't trust me? What about saw Jake GG backwards, man? Gekrek Dallas. <laughs> Get, <laughs> I'm tired, man. A new Brack Band. <laughs> what? Yeah, okay. So Another just, Uther first pick? It could be Uther first pick. Um, We've seen that a lot today. Malfans. Could be Malthale, depending on how these teams are prioritizing him. Or Malfurf. Oh, man. Could be Dehaka. Malthale was banned last game. I want to see him more. LZ's team's the one that picked them earlier. Which side are they on? Dehaka. They do go to Dehaka. LZ's yeah, team is on the right. Dehaka makes sense. Okay, so they go for the global, they go for the solo lane and the tank. The Haka is just very firm for that spot. I'd expect maybe they'll they'll go for the Ariel and then whichever DPS they want with that. Or they could just go for the Uther because Uther is the best support in the game right now. So they are going to go yeah. for Uther. Or do they want to pair with it? What are they going to prioritize? They might just go their main tank. Four guys on a legend do approach the game a little bit differently. Terriel. Wow, look at the skin energy between those two. Yeah, and like Terriel's not at all a common pick here. Yeah. But when is like any team LZ gamers been on drafted normal? Never. They've always done their own thing, and they make it work to an extent. Yeah, they do. You got the double invulnerability with the divine shield sanctification. We'll see, you know, and you can make some pretty sick plays on this map with Tyrell when it comes to controlling the bosses. Get them sick holy grounds, you know. Some yeah. Sanctifications on points. I mean, if you got Divine Shield and Saint, uh, or, I mean, it's not, it's still possible to see Judgment or Divine Storm, too, which is the, the interesting part about these two heroes in the, the current meta. Not common, but still possible, depending on how they want to play it. Um, I will say that Four Guys in a Legend is a team that will oftentimes try to run an Illidan with Hunt as their global to play a very global game. It's not like the Zalia Illidan where he's going to hunt mid-fight on a target that's vulnerable to like a Stitches hook or whatever. It's it's hunt as a, as a global for split push and, and that kind of utility. Uh, but Ariel will be locked in because they're wary of their support situation as well as Stitches. Well, man, Stitches is really catching on lately, huh? I like it, man. I always like watching hooks. Yeah. No, it's definitely fun. It's just it's spread to all the regions now. Yep. Which is cool. He's he's a fun hero. He makes plays. All right, next band coming up here. Four four guys and a legend. Hmm. <laughs> right now they gotta look at the I mean, the tanks are locked in. They already have the Haka, they already have stitches. 
Uh, so then they have to kind of think, okay, who is going to be the mana battery for Ariel? Now, I like the Volaband because the Volaband takes away one of the damage options and makes yeah. the Tassadar Vala less tasty. So if they decide they want to go Li Ming or Lunara, whatever, um, there's there's no other harmonious support or like you know Tassadar to throw in that slot. Mouthfeel is banned out, however, by imported. Yeah, with that one band, they essentially eliminated two characters. They're gonna go Cassius. So they're looking for auto. Hmm. Would they go Joe? They wouldn't have to grab Joe now, but they might. I don't love Joe in this map, though. I really don't. But who's their primary tank? Could still be Arthas to be more of a Bruisery style. Falstead. All right, getting a global. Go say that last tank. Yeah, it's not in the last top. Type. Yeah. So Tyr will be the Bruiser. They'll need a main tank. Yeah. Yeah. Last two picks here. Four imported. I mean, they need the damage. We did see a damageless comp earlier today. A bunch of tanks. Support. But that wasn't from this team. That was from LZ's team. I feel like something's more standard here. Hmm. I mean, they could go Medivh if they want to play that super, like, double support, double tank style with one assassin. Who is that assassin going to be, though? Because typically you want someone with a lot of sustained damage. It's almost Gray like Man? it has to be... What did you say? Greyman, maybe? Could be Greyman, and it could be... Uh, it was on tip of my tongue. I was going to... Gul'dan. Um, Greyman it isn't, like, the ideal um, hope generator for Ariel. That's where Lunara is going to fit in. And they're going to go Tychus as like their 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 tank buster and their range. This is something that we've seen in Porta play a fair bit of is Tychus. Uh, typically, I'm like, eh, I don't know how I feel about Tychus, but some teams are just good with him. Yeah. I mean, he's great on this map. You get yeah. the drill, or uh, like both of them are really good at yeah. the point contention. It'll probably be Odin here for the control, but... Um, you got the Lunariel, the hype of that. Lunariel is really good. Yeah, you got stitches poison, lunara poison, grenades flying at you, a lot of sustained damage that Uther, truthfully, struggles to keep up with. Well, what's this last tank gonna be? Need that main tank roll. Any chance we see the variant here? Nope, gonna be Diva. Yeah, Varian, I don't mind Varian it. just gets bullied by Lunara. Um, we saw LZ Gamer play the Lunara or the Diva well earlier. Yeah, I, I guess he's going to be And this map solo. has a lot of like narrow chokes that you can send yourself to struck through. So, gives you really good zoning for the tributes for sure. Yeah, and the bosses. I mean, that's such a good like. If if you make it to late game and boss fights are a main contention point with Tyrael Diva with Falstad Gust, how does Imported support win a single boss? Like they have to just like get a pick before the boss happens. Like, but if it's an actual boss contention and it's getting close, like dying, self destruct, sanctification, holy ground, mighty Gust, Imported support can't get the boss then. Yeah, late game that is definitely problematic, but their their siege of Lunara and Tychus is going to be insanely formidable. And the fact that Ariel has unlimited mana, where Uther is going to be oom um constantly from the Lunara to Tychus pressure, that's going to where things get going to be where things get interesting. Like, sure, bosses might be really hard to contest, um, but I feel like almost every other situation uh, right. that Uther's mana pool is going to be in a in a in a tough spot. Yeah. Going up against the sustained god. But here we go, guys. Going into our first best of three of the day. We're going to have imported support here on the left hand side. First time getting the cast in the day. Swabs Magoo, Crux, FZ Ignition, Specialty, and The Aware. 
Yeah, this is actually the first time in uh, playing since the Crucible, so going to be good to see them back in action. Their opponents, four guys and a legend here, looking to confirm themselves a good seed for the Blood Bus main event. These points are essential for Imported, however, if they want to be playing in that top eight with a decent seed in the Blood Bus open top eight event uh, happening very soon. We haven't actually uh, announced an official date, I don't think. It's going to be about a week from now, but I need to talk. I need to confirm all the teams and lock in dates. Um, so we'll have news on that very soon. So the difference between this game and the last game is we don't have the most reliable follow-up CC on the hooks. The only follow-up, well actually we do see Lenar getting bursted here, does not end up going down. Um, nice awareness for um, the aware. I'm going to hate casting him now. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's no follow-up CC. The only reliable one they have would be the Hawka Tongue. And and, well, Detainment Strike from Ariel as well. You, you well, yeah, surprised how good Ariels are with that, especially the Aware. Okay, I'll, I'll trust you and yeah. what the Aware is capable of. The Fly, the Hammering, and the Aware is going to be able to get the heal in, but Specialty goes down. Nice first blood. Good fly in from Picante. Yeah, that's a, a big rotation for them. They're not going to really lose anything out of it. They just get the, the experience of one player. A lot of pressure under the top lane as a result. LZ versus Swabs. Now, LZ is he's, he's playing as safely as he can. He's using the hit the nitrous for the additional damage and knockback there at, um, you know, with the boost to try to continue keep that wave cleared up and to prevent these, the ammunition from being burned down too much. Swabs has tapped the well first. LZ has all, actually, never mind. LZ has also tapped the well. Um, but yeah, seems like it'll be yeah. a pretty even matchup overall. The thing about LZ from what we learned earlier is he's, he's not afraid to play pretty loose with his health pool and his mech. He's not afraid to lose mechs because he is pretty aware with his positioning on the Noodle Diva and, you know, is able to get that mech back pretty quickly. So um, he's willing to make those trades. The aware of getting caught in an awkward spot. Jin actually could have gotten the body block there if he would have taken his sword about like a quarter second faster and they might have been able to kill the aware there. Uh, but he is going to go ahead and fold back. And we're going to be getting that first tribute spawning soon. Especially killed one giant. Needs some help, though. Unable to solo this. And since Ariel did end up getting attacked and almost killed, wasn't there for the rotate. Um, so this makes this a little bit, you know, less convenient and clean as it could have been before. And Merc can't pick up. Uh, looks like one minion, maybe, will be lost. No. no. That's actually a situation where, like, if Picante had known they weren't there, he could have let the uh, the minions yeah. die and denied XP. Uh, just one of those small things. Well, LZ Game, we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, bait out Swabs just a little bit, trying to get him to stay a bit longer as his team rotated down. He did end up losing his mech, and he doesn't have that charge up, so he's going to be fighting uh, you know, with the Noodle Dito form for a minute. Has to be super careful here. Ooh, LZ positioning he might actually die oh he that was so patient from lz waiting up there he actually stood there for about half a second before uh like just waiting for the hook like that's how patient he was he read that hook so well from crux that was well played lz lz wanted to hearth but sees that slice blade actually has to go back so he's just waiting patiently for that mech to slam over the wall could be disastrous, so he's, he had to be very, very careful, but he waits long enough to get the mech back. Does have the self-destruct if needed, and now he'll be able to maintain the bottom lane. All the while, we do see the second Merc Camp of the game being worked on here. Cassia is working on the Giants down here, and the first Tribute did go over to the blue side of imported support. Uh, Alturin's might from Jin. She sees Swabs. Oh, he, he looked for the raw, raw drag. That could have been dirty if Jin Alturin'd. Both teams just about to have level seven here. You know, slight experience lead going over to four guys and a legend. Uh, but, uh, you know, we got the bruisers pushing or the knights pushing uh, mid lane here. And we're going to have that second tribute spawning soon. And uh, we'll have to see if the uh, hooks will be on point um, for, for this next tribute contention. LZ with a nice juke. Just keeping the dream alive here in bottom. Does tap the well, has giants behind him. Uh, False Ed now in the top lane, both globals in the top will be able to rotate to this bottom tribute. And it's 7-7. Seven to seven. Should not see four guys in the legend concede this one the way they did with that first tribute. 
Tribute is about to spawn slice but it's starting to cap the channel. The grenade did not end it connecting and the stitches is gonna have to get really close. Nice stun from Eloheim and wow. they're gonna go ahead and cap this and they might get a few kills out of this. They're looking to chase this. LZ Gamer does have his detonate. He does send it out. They're gonna try running out of it. It looks like they'll be able to get out of it. Swaz Magoo forced to rotate a weird way and that will be another kill that for Lunar four damage, guys though. in Legend. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Eloheim. Wow. Actually stepping out to make sure if anyone gets hooked, it's him and able to throw the heels in to the team. Just hate trick on LZ, oh, not oh. able to get the mech. Not able to get in the mech, and now Slice Bay is getting very low. And, you know, you talked about it earlier. The Lunara versus Uther matchup is already, even just this early in the game, is already starting to show that struggle. That Uther just cannot keep up with that much it's so tough. And uh, she's got Splintered Spear now, too, so... That uh, that spread is gonna be everywhere every time he casts the W. Uther, it's gotta land those miraculous Ws of his own to try to heal through yeah. it. But uh, again, Lunara's damage is true damage, and it senses damage over time. She, that armor from Uther doesn't do anything. Yeah, and the Divine Shield, the, you know, when it's like you know consistent damage, is it gonna be as valuable? Especially once Oriole has her, her heroic like. Crystal Aegis is going to be able to prevent those deaths. It's going to be h hard for four guys legend to team fight. Elaheim gets um, dragged, and that should confirm the tribute here for specialty. So nice, easy third tribute of the game going over here to the blue side of imported. Elaheim starting the boss. Oh, do they get this for free? Does this get sniffed out? Swabs? With no one mid, it has to get scouted, right? Okay, LZ just showed. To I think they're sniffing it out. They're starting to rotate out. Yeah, I they think realize. Special T's in it over. Do they have time though? They they don't have. Oh, they're all rotating. Ooh, but you, you this. mentioned this Gus self destruct. So many options. The D shield is thrown out very early. The burrow, the burrow. Oh! They hold the Gus. Oh no! They got it. They did end up getting it there. Elaheim. Oh, the Gus comes through. Elaheim trying to get the safety down. He goes, that's, the, that's Uther. He does have heals through the Ghost form, but unable to do much. Well, that's going to be two deaths there. Uther and Falstead did end up going down. June, Jin might actually go down as well in the bottom lane there. So you lost two people, and you get cursed for a boss. Don't know if that's worth it, Jake. No, it's not worth it. Pretty uh, unfortunate situation there. Um, did they gust? I didn't see they it. Gusted. There. They gusted. They gusted. They had to wait because the Hawk has able to get on the point and then Burrow and the gust then would have been whipped in completely. So good positioning there from the Hawk, you know, putting that threat on, denying the gust. Oh, special T top lane almost gets taken down by LZ. He's Gamer. got hit the Nitrous one second away. It's enough for a kill, maybe? Nope, not oh, at all. Oh, LZ's going to have the R. Oh, he misses. Oh, oh, he's got oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that's right. Oh, false side gets the gust on the swabs McGoo here, um, and that's going to be uh, a dead Dehaka. I don't know why I said it that weird. Sorry, guys. I'm tired. Dehaka. Dehaka. Uh, level hacker. 13 picked up here for imported support. Kills are now tied up. It was a uh, beginning advantage for four guys in a legend, but uh, we're starting to see these trade offs here. Crux goes for a hook onto Jin. Gonna just do a little bit of light damage onto him, but uh, wow, Jake, for a curse, not a single fort fell, and they're only half an eight level up. So despite getting a two man wipe or two man kill, what we thought was like the worst trade possible for four guys in the in a legend, they didn't lose a fort. They might lose one to this boss though. Yeah, they're gonna have to give that up. Okay, so a fort does fall. But that could have been much worse for imported. Or not imported, four guys in a legend. <laughs> yeah, this is... Bottom fort's going to go down. Diva's going to get top fort. So it's going to be fort to fort. Um, but They're this... even after that. Wow, yeah. I can't believe that. Yeah, that's really good. Problem is, is this Lunara uh, damage. I mean, unfair advantages here. And... They're also I, I, not. Uther's going to struggle, I think. We'll see. They're also not soaking right now. Multiple lanes where the Haka is top and all five are bottom. So, a um, little bit of experience advantage coming out here. Hook does not end up connecting. 
Boss is already half HP. The Aware does not end up scouting out LZ. He walked over to the bush, but did not walk all the way in. And here comes LZ with the flank on the explosion. FC Ignition going to get taken out by the Noodle Diva by himself. The explosion was great zoning. LZ Gamer going to get back into that mech. Swaz Magoo in a terrible position from that burrow. And just huge. a little bit too late. Oh, my gosh. That healed him to full almost instantly. But the Aware is going to fall as to the Cassia. Specialty getting very low. Swaz Magoo going to end up going down. What a great team fight here from four guys and a legend. The fact that they were able to just snap kill Lunara basically dumpstered the effectiveness of Ariel and the fight was over. Like, that was it. Like, Lunara is such a, a crucial part of their fight. The dive and the pick was, was beautiful. Well played yeah. there from four guys and a legend. Four guys and a legend? No, that was, L that was all LTD Gamer. That was... <laughs> That was all him, man. That was really well done from him. That that you know the the zoning aim j was aimed perfectly for the explosion, and then the noodle diva just bursted her down. Respect the noodle, guys. Respect the noodle. Okay, they already had that one tribute on the board. Sure, they gave up a curse, but they didn't pay that dearly for it. LZ with the zone paying dividends right now, and the double zone value throwing out that mech. Now he's going to mount up, be a hog rider for the moment. And of course, he's got the mech at the ready. Boss is up in 40 seconds, top right. That'll be the round when the uh, tribute's going to come up. So if there's like a fight around the next tribute, which there will be because it's a curse for Four Guys in Legend, if Four Guys in Legend win it, they're going to be in a really good spot to do some serious damage because that boss is going to push top lane. And there's no Ford up there anymore. That's going straight onto a keep. So if uh, four guys in a legend play this right, they can get secure themselves a keep with this curse. Ooh, Suave the Goo in a little bit of trouble here. I think they're going to give it up. They can't chase this. Yeah. Support was there. Tyrael, now the one being chased away. Holy Ground is in play with that level 16 being picked up. Uh, Stitch is a little bit late on the rotate, so they're going to have to buy some time. You with can't do this poke wars, four guys. You need a hard commit. Lunara is going to whittle you down so fast. So, Wrath of Heaven is going to be so impactful for that Lunara. Again, putting all their eggs into that basket of ignition. Being focused, Crystal A just has to be used. The lightning ball is going to get the kill on ignition. Wow. So much damage from Switchblade and LZ Gamer alone. Swaz Magoo trying to go for the kill onto Picante. LZ Gamer going to take out Specialty with the Noodle. And that is going to be a four for nothing exchange here. Holy and crap. Four guys in a Legends team fight is brutal. That snap decision making from Cassia to go in. And all of his team was with him from the first step. There was no delay in that. They all immediately dove on that and Nunara at once. That's going to secure them this keep. I don't think they can go core here, can they? They only get out. Nine seconds on Lunara. They don't have enough to take. Yeah, they're barely going to get the keep down in time. They can't go for four. It would be an incredibly ballsy move, that's for sure. Yeah. Still, keep is huge. Um, Crux can make look for the hook. Does not get it. That would have been, you know, a good potential pick since everyone had just respawned. Um, they're not going to get it. Level and a half down right now is important support. Four guys in the legend going for that boss. We already discussed this. They've now reached that pinnacle of power when it comes to boss control. You've got Holy Ground. You've got Mighty Gust. You've got Self Destruct. Too many options to even consider contesting that. And I, after the last two team fights, I don't think important support will go anywhere near this boss. Well, they do scout that, and it's being done. Lunara, what? Wow. One R from her puts like half of them at like a third wow. H, like a third HP down. They force them off. I'm surprised, honestly. I thought they'd be I mean, willing that, to take that fight. That's just how you throw. I think you don't have that it's big true. of an advantage. But you have you have an advantage. Yes, you have a keep down. You have almost three fourths down. Um, I don't think they need to force that. Wait to get a pick because they've been winning. The thrusters are down. LZ guys. Gamer, his mech is under heavy siege. Self destruct has to be used. That's going to reset the cooldown on his mech. He can immediately hop back on in and be part of the fight. No, Free no health fight. bar. But look at Crux. Don't. Why are they fighting this with Odin Pop? They should have just backed away, but they're going to keep diving it. They're going for the aware. The ignition is going to take a lot of damage from a slice, but there is the sanctification here. The aware pops crystal egg goes on stuff. A good hook going down on the gin, but that's just going to be the death of both the tanks. Stitches and the Haka end up going down, but Tiro going to fall as well. 
Two for one exchange. All the tanks dying, man. It's not a good day for tanks. Another fight win um, for four guys in a legend, though. They, we saw the gust coming out here. It's going to be good pressure onto Ignition in the back. But he's still landing the big DPS. Ariel almost getting the save, but not enough. A Switchblade is able to vault Picante, in. And man. Is that game? No. Uh, no, no, it's not. It's not. No, 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 it might be. I mean, if the catapults go, are here, so if they wanted to full YOLO, maybe? Well, no, if they just they get boss, Terry will be up by the time boss is done, and then just push into core 20 versus 18. Hmm. Four they catapults. Might be able to those will be cleaned up by stitches. He's got slam build. One slam will mostly clean up this monster wave that's building up. 20, 20, versus, 20 versus 18 is pretty significant. They got bottom boss, which is going to threaten a little bit of cube damage. Do they just, just go? They're just playing safe. I think, they, I think they just get top boss too here. Yeah. I don't think that can be contested. Okay. Can they end with this boss? I don't They're know. They're going to try to. End. They'll try to walk it in. Versus the Lunara with Odin up. That's a tough... That's a tough thing. It to is a tough end. Too. I agree. We'll see. Wisp it's very possible. Though. Confirms. Man, look at the kill count. 17 versus six. In the last game that they played, it was like 35 to four or something. Like these guys know how to team fight, man. Four guys in a legend. We're going to see a diva respect, man. Like LZ is. Well, even the plays, Picante man. with the gust that last fight. That was sick too. Like. That gust secured three kills that they shouldn't have gotten. I was they're they're both playing very well in these team fights. But here we go, the boss is uh coming in here. Ooh, Root does not end up connecting with stitches. The rest of the team is falling up. Cassia looking for the clump up. LZ Gamer goes in with the charge. Does have enough for the detonate, trying to get as close to this core as he can to get that off, and there it is, forcing Dahaka. He needs the burrow. Dahaka does get the burrow down in time. But he's gonna fall. Oh. He didn't uh, cast his oh, ultimate. He didn't get that adaptation. Gust. Yeah, we do see the gust just using that wind tunnel to force everyone away. Sanctification to stay on the point. That's game. Well played. Yeah. Four guys and a legend. That was really well this done. This is and their then, first course, event with Picanti, dude. Picanti's playing well. The gusts were great. I mean, yeah, the, with with the, the materials level 20, same talent. Yeah, and the boss on the core, 20 versus not 20. That was a pretty easy end for them, especially with the kill on the Haka. Uh, so that's going to be a 